Greetings, everybody. This is Buff, and I would like to introduce you to my latest um, design, Time Bomb 6. It's a high gain preamp made out of uh, <laughs> magic eyes, just four of these magic eye tubes, the 6E 5S tube um, from Russia. Um, the idea is just to utilize uh, the four triodes which are built inside. Stagger them up, put them, line, line them up, and create then a high gain guitar um, preamp signal out of it. So, just a few introductory remarks. Basically, this is the um, magic eye, and uh, it consists basically of, uh, of this uh, what is called target, in German it's called Leuchtschirm, and uh, then uh, in front of that is a small triode which amplifies the signal. Basically you can drive then uh, this tiny wedge. I'm not sure if you can see this on the video. Um, uh, with uh, the input voltage of 0 to 8 volt. So this wedge would change, this shadow field would change depending on how much power you apply to the tube. Um, that's of course uh, just a nice thing to have these uh, um, targets glowing nicely in green. But the idea is um, to use to utilize the triads inside for for the sound. Yeah, that was actually an idea I had already in mind for a long, long time, and now I'm starting to uh, build it up. I'm working already a few days or weeks on it. The first thing uh, when I started, I was using the um, I was using the data sheets provided from Russia for the six E five S, but they were absolutely wrong i mean that has really nothing to do with with the with the triad which is built in inside of this tube um i i tried to to use this data sheet and create some um operating points here and some um cathode and anode resistors but in no way we are reaching anywhere near to 10 milliamps so that 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 is absolutely fantasy so this data sheet is definitely for something else but not for this triad or for this uh, magic eye. So in a second step, I then made my own measurements um, of the tube and I started to analyze the curves and the operating characteristics. So I made little, um, made some measurements um, varying the uh, grid voltage from minus 10 to zero volt and then measuring the uh, target, uh, the target current, um, measuring the triode current, uh, plus some further parameters. And then uh, I was also calculating the conductance out of that. The conductance for this little triad inside is really tiny, 0 0.019 milliamps per volt. So that is, is really small compared to, to other tubes which have something like 1, 2 or even 3 or more uh, milliamps per volt. Um, and um, and then I was drawing these curves out of it, and that is basically then the, the curve I'm using. Um, so basically varying from the minus 10 to 0 volt, the input voltage, you see how the uh, anode current is then rising, but it's rising on a very small scale, but still it should be enough. The amplification factor is roughly 25, and with four of them I think I can build a high gain amp out of it. Um, my first idea was also to use this uh, target um, also for amplification because uh, the triad and this uh, target are of course cascaded so it's a little bit like a Darlington transistor um, but I found out that the target if you, if you see this uh, first of all the current goes in the other direction than the one of the triode and since we have a common cathode um, uh, these pro these uh, currents go uh, in the always opposite direction, and if you add them up, then you end up with with, with a very low uh, amplification factor. Finally, I figured out that the uh, that I use the um, target for the amplification. I don't get more than amplification factor of four, which is of course ridiculous, and you cannot build a high gain amp out of uh, <laughs> with, a, with a tube which has only amplification factor of four. So I decided I'll just leave the target for, for, for optical reasons, which is nice. And then I'm, I'm using only the, the built-in triads. 
Yeah. Um, before we look at the circuit diagram, um, let's have a look at the design itself. So basically, uh, we're feeding here our guitar signal in uh, through a capacitor. Um, then we're feeding it to the first uh, to the grid of the first uh, magic eye. And basically from there we go to the second one, from second to third, from third to the fourth. And then we have here a little uh, divider um, to, to limit the output. And here is the output, then the preamp output. And this I'm feeding into the return port of my Marshall. So in a later video I would give some sound samples. But uh, for that I would not use any uh, volume controls, I would not use any sound controls. It's just the raw sound produced by this circuit and as I'm using the return port of my Marshall uh, none of the channels uh, or the uh, ports on the front are used so it's basically the, the raw sound you would be hearing. Um, uh, then basically I have put in, since it's an experimental design, of course it's, it's a breadboard design so it's, it's, a, it's a test design here. I'm using four uh, ports here, these are 5 or 10k ports. Uh, which I'm using on the cathode to determine uh, to, to have a variable cathode resistor uh, to basically uh, set the operation point of these tubes by, by turning these and uh, you know that um, in a, in a um, high gain amp you have to bias uh, the tubes differently uh, rather cold or rather hot Sometimes in the middle it depends a bit because it will make a huge impact on the sound. If you bias it very hot, the tube very hot, then for instance uh, you are cutting half of the, the, the output signal of the tube, uh, which gives you a big amount of distortion, harmonic distortion in that case. My previous designs were all uh, pentodes, so they behave a little bit different, but these are producing then um, even overtones, even harmonics, and um, with this, the amount of these, this can be easily set by these pots. And I tell you, if you turn them, um, you you can change the sound. You can drop the tube into cutoff or to into saturation, and by that you you have to tune the sound accordingly. So right now, I have set these to, for instance, that one is set to almost zero, so it's biased totally hot, and other ones are. Um, 8 volt, this is rather cold biasing, good. Then uh, not too much components, my first uh, step was to put everything on just one tiny board, tuck board, but, but that was uh, overcrowded so I decided I rip off everything again and I put it on two boards. So what do we have here, this is basically for the first tube, uh, second tube, third tube and fourth tube. Um, this one is an interstage divider as always. Uh, where I can set the amount of voltage coming out from the first tube, how much I want to see, uh, how much I want to feed to the grid of the second tube. Um, the same here, this determines the level of input for the third tube and here for the fourth tube. From the fourth tube, as I said, I'm going out through this little divider and then feeding it into the marshal. Um, then just a few capacitors here for, of course, for, for, for coupling capacitors as well as bypass bonding capacitors for the um, cathode resistors or for the cathode pots. And now the, the, the trick is, of course, to, 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 make, to, put, to, to, <laughs> to adjust these capacitors to the right values because previously I was working with um, pentodes, as I said, and there the situation is a bit different here. In triodes we have a big input capacitance, uh, which is called the Miller capacitance, and that can easily kill all your overtones um, because of the, uh, the resistance here. This is a 2 mech ohm divider, so this is set to 3 quarters. So let's say we have a 1.5 mech ohm resistance here. And then with a Miller capacitance of up to 100 picofarad uh, that would uh, drive down your overtones, that would make the sound pretty much muffled. So I have to adjust, um, um, so I have to put some bright caps here in between. That has not happened so far because I was just working on basically on the operation points. 
and on the um, uh, settings here. Uh, then about the power supply, right now I have a small transformer out of an old uh, tube radio. Um, so basically this would generate me um, 260 volts AC, rectifying that. Uh, then, we have a f then we have 360 volts uh, DC, which is too much for the target. The target should be in the range of maximum 250, that's what is specified. I wouldn't even mind if I go that up to 280 volts, um, but for that purpose I have to use some uh, resistors here in the power supply. I'm also then uh, having some further drop resistors for generating the voltage for the triodes. These have a separate tap and these have a separate tap. Um, so we can have a look, short look at the, um, at the circuit diagram. Basically, you see all the four tubes are lined up. That's pretty standard. Here are these cathode pots. Um, the interstage dividers are here. And then the coupling co capacitors and the sometimes the bright cap, as far as I've taken the design so far. Um, the heater uh, power supply is not yet realized. Um, because it's always a bit tricky and this transformer supplies only one winding of six volts. I would like to have two The first one to rectify and to use these with DC and the second one Then with AC to avoid any hum here So that's why that one has not been built up at the moment. I'm just using my laboratory my, my power supply here uh, for feeding the tubes with um, six volt DC um, yeah, so it took me quite a while and the first to, to develop this <laughs> and the first uh, trial was pretty horrible, partly because I was still referring to the values from the uh, wrong data sheet. Um, secondly, because I was uh, once again only dealing with pentodes and for pentodes they behave just different, they have a different overtone. Uh, they, they produce uneven overtones, uh, they have a higher amplification and they don't uh, suffer from this Miller capacitance which once again muffles here my sound pretty much. Um, but nevertheless uh, with a few iterations and modifying a few of the capacitors um, I could bring quite a good sound of it surprisingly. Um, I, I would not give any sense sound samples today because the idea is just to introduce uh, you to the basic design. Uh, the sound samples will probably come a bit later, especially when I'm, I'm a bit more into this, uh, into the bright caps. Uh, but let's say right now it is already pretty high gain because uh, if we have 25 um, amplification factor with each of the tubes, uh, we come here to more or less a square wave of signal, which is then of course, uh, pretty much a heavy metal signal <laughs> sound, and um, yeah, I think um, that's it so far. I just wanted to to show you, give you a basic idea of the design, and uh, then so I would say right now I'm pretty happy already with the sound. I guess we are on on a scale from one to ten, where ten means the best sound I could probably get out of it. I would say I'm on a on a 6 to 7 already. Um, so now the fine tuning comes that will take another few days and a lot of experiments by hit, hooking up the guitar, playing and then soldering some components in and out, trying this out. For that purpose I have created here um, this little cascade that has two clips here and on the back side it has a big amount of capacitors so if I want to bridge something I just hook up these alligator clips into the design and then I can change here either on nanofarads or on microfarads um, <clears throat> for, for changing the sound rather than soldering, um, putting the guitar aside, soldering, putting the guitar back, that's a bit time consuming. So that's quite a good helper here. Okay, that's it for the moment. Um, just one remark further, this, uh, the, the target voltage, 250 volt, is, direct, is directly derived here from the, from the um, power supply, so that one doesn't have any basically impact on the sound. Um, 
it's just this t tiny triad inside, which is um, which is uh, in the signal path. Good, that's all for the moment. Um, I hope in the next days I can report back with a few more um, updates and also with some sound samples because once again I tried it already out a couple of times and the most recent tries were pretty convincing. Um, you know, I, I like this, I like the really, really amp which or preamp which is really sparkling, which is hot, which is really high gain. I mean, I don't want to create any rock and roll stuff out of it. I really want this high gain metal sound and here we are already on a, on a good wave. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Give a like if you like this kind of crazy amps or even give me a subscribe. I would be happy. Thank you and I'll see you soon.